Welcome, oh, for the love of cheese. Welcome Hello. back to. <laughs> Welcome back to Board Game Geese, continuing coverage from the Spiel 2019. Fresh from the Polish salt mines, Mr. Stephen Bonacore <laughs> is joining me, along with Paul Inkow. And we are going to walk through a the, series of games. Series of games. What, what does the Polish salt mines mean? Does everybody know that? I mean, you know what that means. I spent two days in Poland visiting Ignacy in, in Krakow. It was a phenomenal experience. So that's what you meant by that. So yes. I was not actually pounding salt or anything like that. So anyway, as, as usual, we come here to Essen, we have so many new releases, so many big, hopefully anticipated games by gamers, uh, and we have an, actually a new theme this year oh, yeah? of these releases, because over the, over the years, mm -hmm. Stronghold has done many, many, many licensed games, right? We, yeah. we go out to partners, and the partners bring us games, you rebrand them and you put them out. Yeah. But this year, very especially, without, without merger with Indie Boards and Cards, mm -hmm. we are now doing quite a bit more in-house development. Oh, so, really? Yes. Oh. So, yes. So, we're going to see that. We're going to go through the in-house developed stuff first. Okay. And then we can roll into some of the partnership games, all of which are important. Very so, cool. the first thing we have here is Aeon's End New Age. This came out just around Gen Con, just after Gen Con, I think. So, it's a little bit not brand, brand, brand new. But Aeon's End is an amazing system. It's a cooperative deck building game. Each one of these tells another story in Aeon's End. This is Aeon's End New, new Age. Um, every one of these is also completely 100% compatible with every other game. So standalone expansion, you can take your arch mages that you develop in here and you can bring them into the other games. Oh, nice. Um, campaign, right, this has a campaign, four campaigns, Paul knows more than me, it has four <laughs> campaigns that you can go through in this as well. Nice. So, and and we have these three smaller expansions that have just come out as well. So Aeon's End. everything, right? Can we use it, everything. Yeah. Uh, the Aeon's End uh, legacy game is especially interesting, not because it's legacy, which is cost really cool, we did that all in-house, because cool. you can start with the legacy game and you start with this kind of like basic little mage kind of guy and you basically you level him. And by the time the legacy is over, you now have an Archmage and you bring him into all of the other campaigns. So I mean, it slows you into the system too, which is really interesting. So even the legacy character can be a move right over into Boom. the rest of the you can Absolutely. You can then get by this, bring your cool legacy character right into this game. That is nice. Is that neat? That yeah, cool. so, that's cool. So that's Aeon Zen New Legacy and more expansions for Aeon Zen as they come out. All right. Kodama 3D. So we have. This is, again, that's Indie Boards and Cards, but it's one company, Indie Game Studios. Mm -hmm. And this is also uh, Indie Boards and Cards. And they've come out with now three games in the Kodama lineup. Uh, Kodama, Kodama Duo, a two-player game, and Kodama 3D. And this is literally a 3D game. You are building a tree. Paul, give us some overview of those mechanics. Yeah, so basically it's a three-dimensional tree that you're building. Um, on your turn, you or you're using your Kodama to select the right branches. Each branch has a different Kodama on it and a different object on it. Um, when you put a unique branch on the tree, you're able to select a goal card, and ultimately at the end of the, of the game, you're gonna score your cards based on building the tree in a certain way with certain patterns. And, it's, um, and it just gives this beautiful look to the table, To Each person's gonna have this tree and they're gonna be putting these things into it, and it's just I mean, yeah. an awesome, cute little tactile thing. great at thing. the end, yeah. yeah. So that is Kodama 3D, not released yet, but it's oh. premiering here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so everything else here is an unreleased game and premiering like oh. right here, first time shown. Okay, that's good to know. Good to know, yeah. good to know everybody. I also like how you threw it to Paul in that. It was like almost the, the board game equivalent of like a guitar solo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's my role. <laughs> What's next? Very good. So then, of course, Stronghold Games with its new mergered uh, partner, Indie Boards and Cards, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to do Kickstarter games because in the past I was I, I couldn't do them, I just not have the time, the patience, and uh, and, and really the, the know-how to do them well. Well, together now we as a merged company have done 50 uh, successful Kickstarters, and that's mm -hmm. that's great. So it gives great cred. Mm -hmm. So Egizia Shifting Sands is a reprint, but a second edition type of reprint because oh. it does it that we have made some changes to the game yep. with uh, some in-house development. Brian Burzak, I hope you're watching, Brian Burzak did an amazing job of re-playing um, uh, with some of the mechanics. The two-player game is now completely different to make that more, uh, more interesting. And um, this is a game about traveling down the Nile, worker placement. You're traveling down the, the aisle to take the actions at a given port on, on the Nile. Now, the cool thing is, 
Once you travel down, you cannot travel back up the Nile because the currents are taking you that way, other than there are ways, of course, to do so, but that's not the standard thing. So then you have that hard thing to do. Do I, do I go all the way to that action I want down here and then everyone else is going to take all these turns? Or do I only go a little bit and somebody might get that really one that I want? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Cool. Yeah. I love Rede that, that. Redeveloped uh, second edition, we're calling it Iglesia Shifting Sands. All right. Yeah. So yeah, so, the, so it is actually a revision of the rules as well. A then. revision of the yeah. rules. Yeah. The, the, the whole scoring has been changed. Um, there, the, the, in the past, the one argument about the game was the, the Sphinx cards were very swingy, so we've actually moved the Sphinx down the river. Ah, okay. So in order to get them, you, you have to move more quickly and you may have passed things up. So Brian really thought through, from because he's a really great gamer, um, you know, how best to balance the game. So it's been rebalanced as well. Um, but you can still, with this version, you can still play the old game okay. um, if, if you're a diehard. And did you say there were event cards that uh, can affect the current? In, or, or? There are a few cards that will allow you to sneak back up a little okay. bit. But. And, so, so and the, the previous game didn't work with two very well, so this actually has overlays okay. that changes the scoring system okay. specifically so, for two. Okay, so it's about, it's about ancient Egypt, but it's still also about current events then. Uh, event. Uh, uh, next game. Yeah. Sorry. Wow, man, you put a comedian here for me. Thanks. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was our uh, a Kickstarter from this past year that is now delivering and will be in retail next year. Okay. Now another one. This is Aftershot by some you know unknown designer, Alan Moon. Alan Moon and Bobby West <laughs> uh, co um, co designed this game, and this is a, it's called Aftershock San Francisco and Venice. So. Massive earthquakes have hit the planet. You now are going to need to rebuild the cities of San Francisco and Venice. And of course, lots of water involved there and lots of bridges to be built mm. and repopulation of the area. Uh, it is an area control game where you are uh, going to be buying cards that will give you the ability to develop given areas on the board. Okay. Um, and then over the three turns of the game, you're going to score, potentially score, where you have done well. And I say potentially because there's a bit of a negotiation that goes on in this game. If you want to score a given thing because you know you've done very well there, you have your own little behind-the-screen player board that you are going to be putting uh, a token to say, I want to try to score this. Other players might say, well, I'm not going to score that, that area there because if, I, if you're, you're going to get eight points, I'm going to get two points. So you kind of kind of have to like bribe them, like, okay, look, I'll, if you score with me here, I'll score with you over in Fremont area, that kind of thing. So you're kind of like negotiating. It's not, that's not really the true nature, but you're going to be talking to, to each other to say like, oh, come on, let's, let's try to score this and let's try to score this. Huh. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah a little bit of that. Back and forth a lot of simultaneous decisions in the game, so the game moves relatively quickly. Um, and there's also bri bridges between all of the different water areas, of course, yeah. that's part of it. And, and as, the, as you do get aftershocks in the game, you get the small ones, medium ones, large aftershocks, your population has to try to run away. And it's, if you have not built bridges, they either, you'll either have to use somebody else's bridge, which will cost you something, or they will go away. Huh. And then we have a small expansion for that, a six-player expansion, which not only, uh, it's called District 6, not only does it add a six-player to the already five, up to five-player game, it also adds uh, tokens on the board, which gives you different uh, events that occur. I believe they're called event, event tokens? Uh, something like that. Event tokens, we'll call them event tokens, that will have different effects in different areas. Okay. And that's Aftershock by Alan Moon and Bobby West. Right. I don't have a pun about this one. That's my fault. <laughs> Okay, work, work on that. Will you work on that? <laughs> okay. So this, this game, D-Mocker. First of all, it's Kickstarter. Ooh. Second of all, it's, so this is our first in the partnership section here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is with Spielworks. Um, D-Mocker, the cred on, on D-Mocker is that it is the number one game in the Board Game Geek database. Mm -hmm. Everybody out there goes boardgamegeek.com slash boardgame slash one, this game pops up. And why? Why? Because Aldi, who stands right over there, he had so much uh, love for this game when he built the whole system. He said, "This is the this game is going to go in number one." That's why I've been telling people whether that's true or not. <laughs> but it is the number one game. Not true. Jeff Anderson saying it's not true. It's true. It's a, it's a good story, though. It's a great story. So we so this is um uh, when I kickstarted did very well. We made this a limited edition, as it says. Uh, our, our our box is going to actually say limited edition. Okay. Um, is only the copies that were printed on the Kickstarter is not going into retail. So we're going to be fulfilling that. We're going to have uh, copies of this 
at, um, at conventions while they last, and Board Game Geek is going to have copies for sale on their site. So wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so we, we, you know, cause, listen again. We wanted to give it to you guys because it's such a big cred game. Uh, so you guys are going to get some, some hundred number of copies, and that's it. Wow. And that's... then we said we're not reprinting for at least two years if there's demand. So if there's no demand, this game is our the last one and done print. You know, they're keeping the game special in that way. But too. it is. But it is, and it really is a special game mm -hmm. for for uh, some of the people who know some of the older games um, that that made this hobby. Yep. Demacher. All right. Now we get to the Freedom and Freeze games. We'll go very fast, of course, because Freedom was here like literally like 15 minutes ago, yeah. right? So we have Fire will be uh, in, in English uh, from from us, and I forgot what he calls it. In, is it? No, it's not Fire. It's some other name. It right? was, it's Fire in German, actually. It's, whatever, it? whatever. So this is um, themed with um, retro arcades, like some invaders from space. We can't use the real name of that. Oh, <laughs> Space Invaders. <laughs> and you are either a solo player or, it's, or, or a cooperation of two players trying to shoot the invaders. And you go through levels. So you won't even know what's coming up the way you don't if you're playing an arcade game through levels. So we are calling this part of the fable game system. Mm. Meaning, right, here are, the, here are the beginning ones. You don't know what's coming up. Next, you finish that level. Oh. Here are your level two cards, so you can reset the game. So that's the Fable game system. One to two players, freedom and freeze. Together. This one I'm so excited about. I played this one at the Gathering of Friends. It's called Fast Sloths. Um, it's a pick me up and deliver <laughs> me game because you're a sloth and you're lazy and you can't be bothered going and getting all the juicy leaves. So at the other animals in the game will pick you up and deposit you someplace else, uh, and they're happy to do so. Um, in the game, it comes with a, a double-sided game board, so the setup will be different every time. Uh, it has 12 animals in there, which all have different powers. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to pick any set of six of those 12 to play the game. A lot of variety. Uh, a lot of variety. In what a lot you're of variety. Of. I believe there were 16 different boards you could have with the expansion. Play. And then, and oh yes, and each one's a half a board, so yes. they, they they do all kinds of stuff like that. And the expansion there. And these guys want me to go fast, so we're going fast. We're going fast. All right, we're going real fast. Solo game, Coffee Roast, a new partnership oh. with DLP Games. Oh, cool. So uh, we just did Valparaiso with them this year and now Coffee Roaster uh, coming out. It was a uh, Japanese company, a very small print one with some old, you know, that Japanese style art. We've, uh, with, with DLP, we've redone it. This is a bag building game. Solo game, Coffee Roaster. And this small game here, I don't, we shouldn't even talk about this one, right? I mean, this, this one doesn't matter, right? All right, my comedy goes well. All right, so, so Turmoil, Terraforming Mars Turmoil, the fifth and last major expansion for Terraforming Mars. It was kickstarted uh, at the beginning of the year, did extremely well. Um, we're showing you here all of the extra pieces that came with the Kickstarter, which will be available later. Dual layer player boards, which people mm -hmm. want. Very look nice. at Jeff, he's like, oh my god, he really wants one of these. Go ahead, Jeff, you can look at that. <laughs> and a pack of uh, 20 promo cards. Yeah, that's throw the people off, off the camera. That's, that's good. Terraforming so Mars adds politics into the game because, hey, you know, when enough people get together, and no, I want to terraform Mars this way. No, no, we have to leave it more like a science experiment. Don't do work. So the different factions, and you have to send people, delegates, to the terraforming council mm -hmm. and to, to have the majorities in the various parties, and therefore your, your ways will be better. So then in the global event cards, when they, when they come out, they, you'll get better benefits or less bad things happen to you. Paul, I keep talking and you're not talking. I'm sorry. You did a great job. Uh, I did a great job. So. Uh, from my understanding, the, this was actually the first expansion they thought of, but it took them this long to really get to the point where they were like, yes, that's it. That's what yeah, we well, want. That, that's right. Yeah, they, they, this is the fifth expansion. They, they took a long time with this one because we, we're actually calling it an expert expansion because it really adds like an, a very big, call it an area control layer mm. to the whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what, it, that's what it's doing. And I'm getting, I'm getting like the cut signal, I think, over there. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you, Chaz. Always Thank you, Aldi, Jeff. Yay. Thanks Bye. for watching, and uh, we'll have more info for you uh, real soon.